Um, so tonight I'm talking about the dynamics of energy and the irony isn't lost on me that I'm talking about energy when I'm absolutely exhausted. I've got a one-year-old child that's teething, have hardly slept last night, I've been up since 4 a.m., I've seen 20 patients today, I've been at networking meetings, you know, I, live in New I work in Noosa, I live in Croy, and now I'm in Butterham. So I'm pretty stuffed. But I promise I'm going to give you everything that I've got because I really respect your guys' time and we're talking about energy and so I'm going to try and give you as much as I've got left. So just a very quick introduction about myself. I am Shane. Um, I am an acupuncturist and I have a master's in herbal medicine and I'm currently completing a master's degree in Taoist medicine, which is the oldest form of Chinese medicine that's around and that's going to lead me into a doctorate. Um, my clinic's Sun Med community wellness in Noosa. So that's where we do everyday acupuncture and herbal medicine uh, for all sorts of problems. And we also have a secondary business which we've just launched called Not Another Rehab where we use Eastern medicine to treat drug addiction. And so that's gonna be our, our, um, our next key thing that we work on. That's my history, but we're not here to go into that about that tonight. And then the way of wellness method is our um, signature program that we run through both. So let's see if this is magic. Beautiful. All right, so I want to find out from you guys tonight, what is energy to you as a business owner? So hit me with some things. When you think about energy in your business, what do you think of? Time. Influence. Influence. Nice. Presence. Yep. Anything else? Impact. Impact. Vibrancy. Vibrancy. Beautiful. <laughs> Time, money, planning day-to-day -day things, productivity, our get up and go, our general life, our health, our vitality. These are just some of the things I came up with. So what are some of the problems business owners experience around energy? Lack of? What does that cause? What does lack of energy cause in the business? Poor performance? Mistakes? Stagnation, stress, run out of energy at the end of the day, nothing left when we get home for the kids, nothing left for the relationship when we get home, business starts to fail, we're not attracting or retaining the right talent or clients because your energy isn't right, inconsistent moods, health problems, time issues. So these are sort of some of the problems that we get when we're not looking after our energy when it comes to our business and it comes to us in our business as business owners. So I'm gonna start off with some facts about energy. Are there any physicists in the room? Fantastic. Are there any, are there any quantum biologists in the room? Even better. Are there any Taoist masters in the room? Even better, I'm sweet. All right, so. We are 99.95% energy. An atom, we are made of atoms. This room is made of atoms. This empty space is full of energy. Energy is in us. It is around us. It is in our tables. It is in everything that we have. This is the number one rule about energy. Energy cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed. It may only be transformed. This is not woo-woo stuff, this is physics. There are two types of energy. Potential energy, which is chemical, nuclear, gravitational, and elastic. Basically, it's stored energy. Stored energy, this is stored energy, it's matter. Kinetic energy is moving energy, it's mechanical, it's electrical, it's thermal, it's magnetic. So think of heat, think of movement, me prancing up and down up here. This is kinetic energy. Our voices, the light that we see, it's all kinetic. So if we're surrounded by so much energy, why are we so tired all the time? And this is the beautiful thing about Eastern medicine. It can explain this. And I'm gonna get into that in a second. But first we go back to Einstein. E equals MC squared. Has everyone seen that before? Perfect. <clears throat> In Eastern medicine, so this, the equation means energy equals the mass times the speed of light. 
in Eastern medicine, you could say that energy equals yin-yang. Yin is mass. The speed of light is yang. When you take yin and yang and you turn them into everyday words that we use, it's body and mind. So just a little caveat. <clears throat> the first rule of the Taoist scriptures is the Tao that can be spoken is no longer the Tao. And what that means is that when we start talking about these things, it's not really it. Energy is an experience and you have to experience energy. You cannot talk about it. You have to feel it. And this is what we're going to go into. So if the first thing that we're going to cover is the body-mind relationship or yin-yang. Everyone knows this. Anyway, I'll skip that. So <clears throat> the body. In business, these are all business statistics. So the pain costs a business owner $12.7 billion per year. Well, as an overall in Australia, sorry, I should say, caveat. <clears throat> I get a little bit excited. 70% of adults experience pain in the last four weeks. 70%. One in 10 workers affected by chronic pain. 50% experience gut issues. One in seven, it's a distressing gut issue, which means that their problem is affecting, like they've got to take time off work was the, the stat on that. So absenteeism costs three and a half grand per employee per year. <clears throat> so what the stats don't show is how much it costs a business owner to be in pain or have a chronic health issue. So if you're working for yourself, which I saw most of your hands went up before, you know, when we don't take care of ourselves, these are the costs. When it comes to our mind, mental health costs businesses 10.9 to 12.8 billion dollars per year. Presenteeism, as much as 17 weeks of lost time. So presenteeism is the person's at work, but they're not actually doing anything because they have a mental health issue. 15% of employees have mental health issues. So think about that for the guys in here that have employees. There's a lot going on there. A lot of lost uh, productivity. Stress, anxiety, depression as business owners, what's the true cost? Absent with family, absent from, uh, from relationships and absence from our lives. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is energy? So we go back to that, E equals MC squared. So in the body, we've got two things. We've got nutrients and we've got our breath. Oxygen turns nutrients into energy. When we eat something, our, our, it mixes with our oxygen and then it becomes our energy. In our mind, it's our awareness and our intention. So I'm sure you've heard energy flows where intention goes or you know where you put your attention, it grows, however you want to put it. <clears throat> so in Chinese medicine, we look at this. So we go mass times the speed of light. So yin and yang equals the movement of qi. So qi is energy in Chinese medicine. That is your emotions. Emotions are the movement of energy within our body, energy in motion. It's not a it's not uh, quackery, it's not woo-woo, it's actually what it is. When you feel an emotion in your body, you're feeling energy moving through your system. Energy has four movements. It goes up, it goes down, it goes in, and it goes out. You see this through the day. We have dusk, dawn, we have midday and midnight, we have seasons, we've got spring, we've got summer, we've got autumn, we've got winter. This is where energy is moving up, down, in and out. We've got full moons, new moons, quarter moons, third moons. We've got weeks. We've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that mystical space between Sunday and Monday called one day where nothing gets done. So the emotions of Eastern medicine, we've got seven. We've got fear. We've got anger. We've got shock. We've got excitement, we've got grief, we've got sadness, and we've got worry. I'm going to go into these. <clears throat> but this is psychology. So this is actually, this is a wheel. It's called a feelings wheel. It comes from um, 
a section of psychology, I can't quite remember what the name of it is, but they also have identified seven core emotions at the core that every single human being worldwide experiences. Eastern medicine has been talking about this since 200 BC. But they've tweaked it because we like to use words and make things more complicated than they need to be these days. But it, remember, it only goes up, down, in and out. So, first emotion is anger. Anger rises in the body. So when anger is moving in our body, it comes upwards. And as it's moving up, we get reactive. We scare off our clients. We go into fight mode. We get headaches. It affects our eyes. It affects our ears. It affects our mouths. It affects our necks, our shoulders. So all of our energy when we're angry is rising up through our body. And so we need to start becoming aware of what the energy is doing in our body. Next one's fear. When we experience fear, our energy sinks or it goes down. And you think about it when you see it in a little child, when they, when they get scared of something, what happens is they wet themselves. So their energy is moving downwards or literally the terminology of, I got so scared, I shit myself. Yeah, it's energy going down. We, we talk about these things all the time. Now, if energy is going down, it can cause leg pain, it can cause foot pain, it can cause back pain. It can take away our drive to do things. Time goes away quicker because we're down, we're stuck down. And then, of course, money goes down when we're feeling like that. <clears throat> shock and surprise goes outwards. And so you think about what happens when you get a shock. So you walk around the corner and someone jumps out from behind the door and you get this oop. And you feel the energy go out in your body. It just scatters outwards. And so shock and surprise scatters our energy. And when it becomes scattered over a long period of time, this is trauma. There's lots of people talking about trauma at the moment. And trauma is scattered energy. And so you can't think, you can't think things straight. You get anxiety, you get flighty, you can't make decisions, you can't think straight. So this is going to affect how we run our business. <clears throat> when we experience joy or happiness, this actually over a long period of time slows our energy movement through our body. And so <clears throat> people that are pursuing happiness, chasing, chasing happiness, chasing pleasure, what happens is it's actually been shown that it can cause cardiovascular diseases. And you know, people that have uh, heart attacks when they win uh, the lottery or the old man who dies having sex with an 18-year-old prostitute because he's so happy about it. It's, these things are real and the energy of it is because the energy slows down in the heart and then the body, the heart gives out. This can cause poor immune function. It can cause people to be inauthentic, it can cause people to feel fatigued, it can pe cause people to be ungrounded. And so we all know that the, the, you know, the, the hippies running around at the festivals telling everyone they love each other and how ungrounded it can be. So this is, this, in the long term, it can slow the energy of the body. Sadness, energy's going inwards. And so lots of... Um, People suffering from depression. So it's an inwards motion. Yeah. Um, grief going inwards uh, can cause the body to feel weak. We don't want to work. We're stuck in freeze mode of fight and flight. We can get painful joints. We can get gut issues. All the energy is going inwards. And, you know, like <clears throat> these images, I got them off my Bitmoji because I love Bitmoji. Um, but it's the perfect example. You think about someone that's depressed. And what do they look like? They're hunched over. If you walk past uh, someone that's grieving, they're quite often they've got their hands over their face. So it's the energy's moving inwards. Grief and disgust. Again, think about what happens when you think of something disgusting. Pull a, pull a disgusted face. What does it look like? Yeah. 
So the energy is moving inwards. It's sucking inwards. It can cause cramping, aches and pains, compassion fatigue. Everyone else is wrong. Everything is hard work. Nothing can get done. And the reason, because it stagnates the energy, as someone said before about stagnating energy. Finally, one of the core emotions is worry or feeling bad or being bad, being naughty. Energy go, causes energy to go inward and it knots the energy in the body. So again, it's a form of stagnation where it causes stuckness in the system. So everything stops flowing. And when it stops flowing, again, we get aches and pains. We can get nauseous. We can become faint. We don't want to be seen. We're overthinking every single decision. So again, nothing gets done. Unregulated emotion becomes empty and stagnant. That's it. When it comes to all of our emotional energy, all of our energy within our body, we get empty and we become stagnant. When that happens, we get a separation between the body, mind, and energy. Now, if we look at our body, mind, and energy, between our body and our mind, we have our belief systems in our body, our subconscious beliefs. Between our body and our energy, we have our emotions. Between our energy and our mind, we have our thoughts. And then when we have our emotions, our thoughts, and our beliefs, that creates who we are. And that is where your business is built from if you're a business owner. It becomes, it becomes from you. It's your baby. And so anything that we do comes from our identity. And if our body, mind, and energy are out of balance and they're separated, <coughs> then we're going to have issues. And so when it's separated, that's when pathology starts to happen in our bodies. And this is when we start to have problems. We have no relationship. We have no connection. And that, my friends, is no bueno. That is no good. Energy disappears and we have separation between body and mind. The separation between body and mind is ultimately death. But at a, like a much subtler level, it's just pathology. And I'm not going to go too much into that. But what this causes is what we call the addiction treadmill. And I'm not going to go into too much about this. But this is something where we all get stuck in, we start to chase things. We start to chase rewards, chase the next big thing, and we run away from all the problems. And as business owners, we all get stuck into the same thing. We get the, the <clears throat> quite often say to, when I'm working with addicts, I say to them, the behavior of an addict and the behavior of an entrepreneur are exactly the same. One gets celebrated and one gets shamed. And the entrepreneur gets celebrated because they create something new. Whereas the addict gets shamed because they're destructive in their behavior. And so <clears throat> the whole thing is, is as we're chasing this, we need to realize that we're actually chasing something because we have a separation between our body and our mind. And we can heal all of that process. And so what the whole thing is, is to actually come out of running away and chasing something, avoiding the pain and chasing the pleasure and come back into the middle state. And the middle state is a place of equanimity. It's a state of potential. And it's essentially what intrinsic motivation is. And it's our true nature is to be like that. And these are the things that the old, uh, it's been this has been proven in neuroscience. It's been proven, it's been written about in the uh, scriptures from thousands of years ago across all the different religions. They're all talking about the same thing is when we come back into this polarity of a balance between the two things, we have no issues. We either make ourselves miserable or we make ourselves happy. The amount of work is the same. It's something that Kendall was talking about before. You have to do the work. If you don't do the work, it doesn't work. And the beautiful thing is, as Kendall's already mentioned, everything that I was going to talk about for solutions, which is awesome. No, no, no problem at all. It makes my life very easy because I can get through the next two minutes like because I just got the call. <laughs> so making the change. So... <clears throat> First thing is awareness. So I have just delivered you all awareness about what your emotions feel like. It goes up, it goes down, it goes in, and it goes out. 
Now it's up to you guys to figure out what that feels like for you. Now you have to become aware of when your energy is going up, when your energy is going down, when it's going out, and when it's going in, and what you need to do to help with that. <clears throat> we got taught how to breathe at the start of the night, so I'm not going to do that. Food, how we look at food in <clears throat> Eastern medicine is very different. We don't talk about protein, carbohydrates, and fats. We talk about flavors. And the flavors have those same movements. It goes up, it goes down, it goes in, and it goes out. Spicy foods go out. They make us sweat. They make us hot. So the energy is moving outwards. So if someone has energy where it's going inwards, we want to give them something warm and spicy to help the energy start to move outwards. And it doesn't work like medication. It's not that amazing. You need to do it for months on end to keep it moving, to keep it moving outwards. When someone's got too much energy going outwards, we give them something sour because sour pulls everything inwards. And when we've got <clears throat> too much energy going up, salt makes the go down. But if we give too much salt, it makes it go up. And if we've got something going down, we need to use bitters. Bitters will help bring it down. And then if we have too much bitter, it comes back up. Finally, we need to move. We spoke about that. We do two things in movement. We talk about working out and working in. Working out is going for a run, going for a walk. Working in is doing things like qigong, meditation, tai chi, yoga, to learn how to feel what's going on in our systems. And if those are the three things that I find work for most people. But if that doesn't work for you, it's pretty serious and we need to talk. But you do all those things and you start to restore your energy flow, you decrease stress, you decrease sickness, you'll decrease absenteeism, you'll decrease burnout, you'll decrease fatigue, and you'll decrease overwhelm. And you'll increase your performance, your wellness, your vitality, your peace of mind, your boundaries, and your freedom, which is I'm sure most people are looking for. That's it. Thank you very much.